So what excites me about technology is its ability to, to equalize the odds. I think we are going to make a lot of impact on smaller cities, on emerging economies, on in remote areas. So that excites me. I think tech will play a big part. Hi, my name is Jaspal Sidhu and I'm the chairman of the SIS and Inspiracy Schools. What it means for being human in the digital world for me, it means that I have autonomy on my own choice. And my choice is not diluted by technology. It's not sent to a certain direction and, and desire created for me to build my own relationships the way I want with businesses and with human beings. My guest today is Jasper Sidhu, founder of the SIS and Inspirasi Group of Schools in Indonesia. Jasper is well known for his leadership not only in providing quality, affordable international education, but also using storytelling as a medium to inspire his staff and educate the citizens of tomorrow. I think, um, first of all, we need to understand what is a story. A story has a start and yet it's an end, but very importantly, it's a journey. And the journey brings emotions and it brings uh, uh, attention. So as an educator, I think stories are a great way to take you and transport you to someplace magical where children can see and understand and appreciate a completely different world. And the second thing is actually, it's a great way to explain complex issues. Look, as a leader, I tell a lot of stories in my office. Um, when we gather. I think it's a great way to inspire people. I tell them about how we have really brought the cost of education down and they all get inspired. And from there, I talk to them about how we have this new Inspiracy journey, which is aimed at the bottom end of the pyramid. And it's also a great way to align your organizational values with your own personal values. Uh, so people understand what we're all about. I've been asked to do schools in, in high-end um, in cities. I prefer to do schools at the bottom end of the pyramid and people understand from these stories why we do it. I, I enjoy stand-up comedy. I, I, I dabble in, in stand-up comedy. So there are three, three things. One is humor. Humor is a great way to, to get an audience to listen to you. And second, it's also a great way to, to incite some emotions in you. I mean, here's an example. Uh, my dad lost his eye and I was so upset. On the way out, I gave him a hug and he turned to me and said, don't worry, son, now I only see 50% of your mom. And I thought it was a great joke and he completely put, put a smile on my face. So it's, it's humor. Humor is a great way. The second thing is always understand your audience. Understand the appropriate age, the culture that you're talking to and, and be concise and not to start rattling off long stories. People like sharp punchlines. And I think uh, that's a great way to tell stories. So look, storytelling doesn't come natural to a lot of people. So AI tools has a great way to generate content. So I think if you if you want to be a storyteller, there's so many AI tools, right? It, con it generates content and it gives you an idea of how to develop this content with, and mesh it with your, with your real life, give you ideas. Second is language. I think there's so many AI tools that help you with precise language and storytelling that's important. Of course, there's VR and AR, right? Because then you completely immerse yourself um, in storytelling. For us in our schools, we use a lot of VR and AR. Children learn about the pyramids in Egypt. So it's, it's really, really useful, uh, these tools. So in a country like Indonesia, which is driven by con uh, a local consumption, domestic consumption, I think they've found too many stories on consumerism and materialism. I think people need to hear the stories about societies going through difficulties, the uh, inequities around education, and those stories need to be heard more. And this is what we try to provide, try to get into these areas and tell our stories. And sometimes it get drowned by, by all these consumer uh, driven stories. Yeah, so again, I took them to Bali and I said, look, write whatever you want on the board, how tech can help you. Forget about whether the tech actually exists. Just write whatever you want that makes you a happy individual and you and makes the organization a happy individual. You'll be super surprised by what, the kind of things they put. Um, one individual wrote that um, she just wants to track 
how many steps he takes in the office. That was very important to him, personally for him, because he figures if he can work and exercise at the same time, it makes him a happy individual. So those conversations were, were interesting, that people want to blend personal well-being with organizational uh, uh, purpose. So those conversations uh, were wonderful and, and it's taken us to a very different level. I think for them to understand threat, the easiest way is for them to understand impact. I think if people understand every day why they come to office and the impact that they, they, they do in office, tech is just a tool for the impact. And that way they won't look at tech as a threat. That's number one. Number two, to ensure that tech is not there to replace them. That they are very much, it's there to supplement them, to augment their work, and even to help them as an individual. So, so these are the things I stress to them and uh, it, it, it's working. I saw the happiness index, personal well-being was, was high um, and uh, they were just energized by, by these conversations. So, so we have schools in developing countries like Indonesia, Myanmar, India. So one of the things we have realized if, if we can use these technological platforms to have young children as young as kindergarten to do, for example, show and tell and have their friends in Myanmar listening in and have their friends in India listening in to do cross-border projects between grade one kids and, and grade one kids in Myanmar. The results have been fantastic. The children suddenly make friends across borders and they begin to understand what the issues are across, across borders. So I think these platforms have, have really benefited our school. So, I think um, that's, that's a question that people may have different answers depending on what industry that they are in. Um, I'm in the industry of providing or what I call equalizing the odds out there. So what excites me about technology is its ability to, to equalize the odds. And I think that's a great conversation for us to have um, access. And access is around infrastructure and it's around affordability. Now, if we can put this in a nice package, I think we are going to make a lot of impact on smaller cities, on emerging economies, on in remote areas. So that excites me. I think tech will play a big part. The one that I worry about are the ethical issues around it. Uh, digital discrimination, cyberbullying, uh, fake news, um, online harassment. So I think those are areas that sometimes are, are far more difficult to handle. We identified four characteristics of humans. Humans as dreamers, humans as physical beings, humans as social and moral beings, and humans as storytellers. Since humans discovered language, stories have been an important part of human life. Today, we explore the aspect of humans as storytellers and how the future of the internet is going to change the way tomorrow's stories are being told.